Well, I have a special treat. I'm at Dancing Oaks Nursery with Leonard, and Leonard, you have a, just a sneak peek of what's going to be shown for your nursery out at Garden Palooza just, that's coming up on April 4th. Right, Judy. Uh, we uh, had one of the plants that was really hot last year, and it's going to make a uh, return encore performance. <laughs> and um, it's a frittle area. Uh, gets quite large as frittle areas go, so about three feet tall. And it's frittle area imperialis uh, crown imperial. It's a very unique whirl of uh, orangish bells at the very top with some leaves on top of that. They're so dramatic. impressive. They're so impressive. And it's, it's really great rerun. I mean, it's really not a rerun. It's like you're going to introduce it to some more people that maybe didn't see it last year. Yeah, so hopefully uh, <clears throat> the early birds will be able to uh, <laughs> get one of those at Garden Palooza. And another Fritillaria relative is uh, this one here, Fritillaria miliagris, also known as guinea flower. It has this unique uh, checkering pattern, uh, or tessellation is a botanical term for that. Uh, they like kind of moist meadows. Um, don't, a lot of fertile areas don't like to go completely dry in the summer. Oh, interesting. So give them maybe a woodland condition, they'll be happier. Ah, and they kind of naturalize, you'll get a nice little stand every year. Yes, oh, and beautiful. there is a white variety of this, but this uh, checkered form is definitely the most uh, dramatic. Now this one down here, it's an old favorite, Oxalis, but it looks like no Oxalis i ever seen. Right, this is a wonderful uh, Oxalis native to uh, the Andes uh, in Patagonia and Chile. Uh, it's uh, clump forming, so it's um, people, when they hear oxalis, they sometimes flinch <laughs> and jump back a few steps. This is a very well-mannered, mm -hmm. uh, beautiful foliage for uh, several months, and flowering period over about, uh, oh, five to six weeks, if not more. Wow, wow. And this one is so pretty. What an unusual kind of color combination, that bright fuchsia and yellow. Yes, this is a, a native of the Alps. It's a... Uh, um, Polygola chamabuxus and a cultivar named called Kaminsky, mm. which is I think named after a mountain range there. Uh, very early blooming, starts in December and goes all the way until March for us. Wow. Um, very, long yeah, good long blooming and um, during the summer you have this nice evergreen uh, boxwood-like foliage. Really um, all season interest, so that's very nice for our gardens. Yeah, and very uh, well mannered, just about six inches tall, creeps about to two feet wide. Ah, and what's this one? I see a little bloom just coming to peak up here. Yeah, these are going to be the uh, fawn lilies or trout lilies, erythronium. Mm -hmm. And this is a cultivar called Pagoda, which has a really uh, nice lemony yellow, almost sulfur yellow bloom. Oh, beautiful. And it's a hybrid, so it's more vigorous than some of the species. And oh, it'll nice. over time bulk up really nicely. Wow. Now this one is just too dramatic. I just love this. And it's really another old favorite, Ceanothus. Right. This is a uh, hybrid that occurred in Ireland. Um, it was just a found hybrid. Uh, so they're thinking one of the parents was Thirstiflorus, which mm -hmm. is a hardy one. Uh, I saw this for the first time last December in California with some other plant friends and we were just amazed instantly and I just got to get this plant. It's a uh, very dark foliage. It's very different from any other Ceanothus. They have a beautiful pink bud in late summer and the blue flowers set off against this black foliage. Oh, you have like wet our appetite so much to go to Garden Palooza and stop at your booth. Thank you so much for a sneak peek. Oh, well thanks for coming out and we'll hope for nice weather that day. Definitely.